Hello, hello, welcome back. For those of you who are the first time viewers, I'm Satori, and we are playing Kerbal Space Program. Uh, for anybody who saw the last episode, I have um, off camera spent some time figuring out what was wrong. It looks like Ferrum uh, Aerospace Research is having a little bit of a bug. Uh, so that's what was causing our parachutes to not function whatsoever. Um, well, in this episode, you'll see some parachutes working appropriately so that when they're deployed, the ship decelerates instead of accelerating into a fiery wreckage on the ground. I am happy to say, or sorry to report, that there will be fewer explosions in this episode. We've uh, launched a rocket into the air, now it's time to start looking at escaping the atmosphere. And if I can manage it, I'd even shoot for orbit, although I don't know if I have the tools yet. So let's go to research and development. Let's see what new stuff we can get. So we, we did pick up the new safety equipment in the last episode. We do have a liquid rocket, the swivel. Now we do have enough science to pick up one of the next. We almost have enough to pick up both of the next two. But this will get us a larger fuel tank, but really this is just a double size of the other. Uh, and the only reason that this is meaningful at the moment is because until we upgrade our rocket assembly building, we have a part limit. And this will, we, we can use two small fuel tanks, two of these, and it's the same as one of these, but it's two parts instead of one. I don't think we need the stability yet. We don't need the radial decoupler quite yet. Let's focus on one thing at a time. We definitely want to get into basic science as soon as we can because getting more science is what will get us uh, quicker and quicker into the tree. You know, I think I think we can actually launch into orbit with the equipment we have. Um, in career mode, the fun thing is that you can upgrade these. So you can see I have a dirt runway and this rinky-dink little launch pad, uh, tiny, tiny buildings and big plots of land. So as we go, we'll pay money to upgrade our buildings. So right now we have 30 max parts. Uh, and I don't know if that will be enough. To achieve orbit, it's going to take a fair amount of push. I'm going to assume that we don't have enough yet, and we're only going to shoot to go up out of uh, out of the atmosphere, so above 70,000 uh, meters, and we'll we'll do uh, another parachute test. In the previous version of KSP that I played, generally you had one sort of mission that involved parts, um, and that was test. And what test meant was you needed to activate it through the staging mm -hmm. system under specific criteria. So you can see right here, it says to perform the test, activate the part through the staging sequence when all test conditions are met. Um, and with some, that was kind of awkward because, you know, it gave you an altitude and a speed, and it might be tricky to hit just that target. A haul contract, all we have to do is have it. We're definitely going to use this engine, so this seems kind of like a perfect test for us, and it'll get us a, a good little bit of currency. Um, we're going to save our money for the moment because I'm not quite sure yet who I want to upgrade. Um, and let's get into building a rocket. All right, so uh, let's let's do a whole new build. Um, so we're still gonna start with our command pod. And we're still gonna throw Valentina in there because we're gonna get her leveled up first. Um, so as pilot experience improves, they can do um, better controls, better maneuvers, uh, they're, they're, they're better at their job, basically. Um, there's a variety of ways that you get experience. Um, hitting basic milestones like, you know, flu, <laughs> period, is an accomplishment. Um, hitting, uh, you know, uh, orbiting uh, a specific celestial body is an accomplishment. Um, so we're going to leave the atmosphere. We definitely want to be ready to do some science. Okay, and we... <laughs> Do we want to, because we're, we're, so we're, we're working under a really tight part uh, restriction. So I know we're going to cross two zones. So uh, upper atmosphere and atmosphere are each things that we could do science on. And I know we can survive the descent with a big honking bit here. So we're going to attach this. Now what this part does, this is a part of the, the Kerbal Engineering System. This basically will let us have engineering info while we're in flight. Um, so you either need this part or you need a, um, an engineer on board. So we're going to double these. So now we have the ability to do two of those, two reports, uh, two experiments in those two zones. We're going to stick a primary chute. We're going to stick uh, 
I'm going to stick three, because I think this should be enough to get us back down. We're not going to be going at, at super high speeds, so I'm not super concerned with having a blader. Um, but, it looks nice, and it'll give us something to land on um, that can be relatively um, unconcerning. So, we're, I'm going to pretty much remove the ablator, because... Um, so, basically, what a heat shield, what a blader and a heat shield does is, when you're coming back at super high speeds, say you come back from the moon, that is going to get um, damaged instead of your part, instead of your, your ship's parts. Um, it's, it's not a big deal at the moment, but we're going to do it because it's nice, um, and we'll remove that if we start hitting our part limit. So let's see, so far we have 12 parts, that gives us 18 more parts to just do the, the orbiting process. So the we're going to use liquid fuel because the swivel will give us the ability to um, to actually angle our craft a little better. The TWR is your thrust to weight ratio. Um, so bear in mind this is a liquid uh, liquid fuel engine, so this actually can be throttled now. TWR of one, thrust to weight ratio of one means the thrust you're generating is only sufficient to cancel gravity. So basically, if we have a 1, the rocket doesn't go anywhere. It just sits on the pad and, and shoots up. If it's anything less than 1, the same thing happens, but we're not quite countering gravity, so there's still weight on the ground. You want to go slower at first, and then accelerate the higher you get. The reason is, there's actually air close to the ground, and the whole challenge of a rocket is pushing your way through that air in addition to gravity. So um, at about uh, 10 kilometers up on Kerbin, the atmosphere is down to maybe 15% of the, the amount of air that you have at the launch pad. So that, that air resistance goes way, 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 way down. Um, and at that point, then it's, it's fine for us to start uh, accelerating faster and faster because we won't see you know, the mock effects. We won't see the, the high speed wind resistance. But so we definitely can put a big thrust limit on this. Um, so we want, we want our peak to be, um, we'll, we'll put our peak a little closer to three, so that we can we can articulately control the the thruster, so that we can be low at first and then we can dial it up as we get higher up. That'll improve our efficiency a great deal and give us a lot more bang for our buck. Um, we are not using our mono propellant, so we can remove we can take that out for the time being, um, and we're going to need more fuel. So, we'll pop this off, and we'll stick in some more fuel. So, with more interest, with our more advanced rockets later on, we'll start doing things with, um, with, you know, multiple stages and decoupling. Uh, we'll have side arms, and later on, we'll even start moving fuel so that we can do asparagus staging. And I'll explain all about that when we get there. For the moment, we're just looking to rocket into space. Uh, and I do believe that this will definitely shoot out of the atmosphere. We're even under our parts limit, so let's put some nice stabilizing fins. Uh, we'll do... Let's do six. We're going to go crazy. Because these are super cheap. So these, these are 25 apiece. Um, as opposed to, say, the engine, which is 1,200. So the fins are really kind of uh, cheap parts. We're not super concerned about that. So we have the science. Uh, we need to fix our stages, which look like it's fairly OK. So it'll fire the rocket first. Then we'll decouple the rocket when we're out of fuel. Uh, and then we'll engage our parachutes. So at the moment, we have two missions. Um, we're going to escape the atmosphere. So it's above 70,000 uh, meters. And we're hauling the swivel engine with us. So <laughs> having it into a flight above Kerbin, that's all we need to do, easy money. Uh, we'll celebrate when we get back. So, uh, this ship will be a breacher to leave the atmosphere. Alright. I believe all the bits and pieces are in order. So the handy dandy little engineer's report will let you know if there are any particular issues. And they see no concerns with this. We're under the parts limit. We've got Valentina in the pilot seat. We've got our science ready to go. Stages are set. Um... SAS is on, throttle to full, ready to go, 3, 2, 1, make rocket go now. So, we're going to...
going to pass that blue mark, which we figured out was about 19 kilometers, uh, and then we're going to start doing our signs. So on our way up, we're going slow at first, which is good, wonderful, lovely. And when we reach uh, 10 kilometers, once we've uh, breached through that low atmosphere, that high pressure that we're just shoving ourselves through right now, we're going to start angling. What this is called, it's called a gravity turn. Basically, if you think about it, the planet underneath us is, is orbiting that way to the left on the screen. Um, so if we tried to go with it, our speed relative to the surface will be less because of the speed that that's traveling. Instead, we're going to angle to the right so that we go in the opposite direction so we get that tiny little boost towards a, an orbital, orbital uh, velocity. Uh, so actually our thrust to weight is, is going up very nicely but we're using a lot of fuel so this might not actually get us out. I really thought. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to refresh myself on the numbers, that's for sure. So let's let's throttle back a little. We'll keep our thrust to weight ratio around 1.5, conserve some fuel. So we definitely could have started our gravity turn if we weren't eyeballing stuff. Looks like we have another 13 seconds of thrust. So we're not going to get out of the atmosphere, but it'll be a good first effort. And we're definitely high enough that we can start doing some science. Nice, tasty science. Okay, so we don't need the butt anymore. Okay. Take a crew report up here where the air is thin. And let's see how high we peak. So now we can time warp a bit. While you're still in atmosphere, it'll limit the time warp, and if I tried to time warp it again, it'll say, uh, you know, danger, this uh, th uh, time warping too high can cause um, a hazard to your vehicle, because basically when it's, when it's time warping, it, um, it shorthands some physics calculations, so it can have kind of random, surprising, non-inappropriate uh, effects. So we're going to orient ourselves right into the thing. So, um, first symbol to get to know on the nap ball um, are the green marks. So the green mark with the three prongs like this and an X in the middle that you can't really see is a sign of the back end. Um, with the three marks this way and a dot in the middle that you can't really see. Ooh, 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 we're coming down fast, but notice how we're slowing from the atmosphere. Uh, when we hit three, th when we hit about four, first shoot. Oh, shoot's destroyed. Everything is awful. <laughs> so we need to be below. Yep, so we need to be below. Um... <laughs> so we do need to be below uh, 300 meters per second before we hit our shoots, or our shoots are going to get torn off. I'm remembering things bit by bit. Um, the question is do we want to stick a little bit more fuel in there? You know what, let's, let's go back to the design, now that we know we don't have enough to get into orbit, but we did get about, or to get out of atmosphere, but we did get about halfway there. So what we can do, is we can put some more fuel in there and see how far that'll get us. Hmm. So let's see, I think we, we said we had 28. 26. We can we can always cut down on fins a little. Those are just for fun at the moment. How much does two more tanks get us? So that gets us another 400. So one of the fundamental challenges of rocket design is the the fuel conundrum. Basically, the idea goes: if you want to launch your rocket into space, you need fuel. You need propellant for your rocket. The heavier your rocket is the more effort, the more fuel it takes to push. So the more fuel you have to add. So you add more fuel, which will require more fuel to lift that fuel. So basically what happens is you get diminishing returns. So you saw I added that those two tanks and they gave us 400 more meters per second. Now if I add one more tank, well let's add two more tanks because we can. 
two more tanks, and now we only got 300. So if I just keep adding tanks, I'm going to get less and less benefit for those extra tanks. Uh, let's see, how many parts do we have? We're up to, so we can do three more tanks if we really want to push it. Let's push it! Let's go crazy. All right. Now we have <laughs> we have almost three thousand, almost three thousand to push us three three thousand delta V. So delta V is a, a handy expression of just how far your fuel will get you. We are going to turn our thruster limit up, and we are going to throttle way back. So uh, the number outside of the parentheses is your initial thr thrust to weight ratio. I'm going to stop calling it thread at some point. 4.85 is the max. So that's basically when we're almost out of fuel. That last drop of fuel is going to be at 5. Um, so we're going to start. We're going to remove the thrust limit. We're going to start way throttled back to conserve fuel. And we'll, we'll throttle up as we go. We've got our stages all okay. You know what, I'm going to separate out these stages so that we have a little bit of a safety net. I believe we're right at our park limit. There we go. Okay. Breacher 2. Ready to go. Flight check. We have Valentina in the seat. Nothing is concerning. We have our stages, we have our parts. All right, let's do this properly this time. We're even gonna do a good gravity turn because I'm not gonna be distracted thinking about other things on our way up. Uh, so max would be 1.6, and we wanna hit about 1.3, so we're gonna guesstimate around here, and let's see how that works. Three, two, one, make rocket go now. Okay, so it's only 1.3, so you can see we're barely lifting off. So we'll get it up to about 1.3, and we'll maintain that until we get above, say, five kilometers. And then we'll start dialing it up a bit. So the atmospheric pressure drops off uh, pretty rapidly as we get higher and higher. As I mentioned, at about 10 kilometers, I think we're down to like 12% uh, atmospheric density. And generally, before that point, we don't want to be going too much faster than, say, 300, 400. So we're going to keep our thrust to weight ratio below 2. Until after we've done our gravity turn. So there's a lot of things to keep track of. Keeping an eye on the thrust to weight ratio. Keeping an eye on our total speed. Keeping an eye on... So now we're going to start our gravity turn, which we're going to do very gently towards the 45 degree. Being very careful to nudge it over. Basically, the further we get from that dot, the more lateral pressure we're putting on the craft because we're angled uh, off of our line of ascent. So it's a bigger face that's pointing towards stuff. So once we hit uh, the 45 degree mark, then we'll really throttle up. And as you can see up here, our apoapsis is predicting right now uh, steadily climbing. We like to see that. Just nudge this over. And then that, so that marks where we're actually pointed to. And when we get there, we're going to throttle up. So there we go. We're almost to it. There we go. We're going to breach our target. Let's blow the last of our fuel. So long as our periapsis is still negative, we're not going to leave the planet. <laughs> Which we don't want, because in order to get back from orbit, we're going to need more fuel. So we're definitely high enough that we can take our first science. So this, you see, is upper atmosphere. And now, dump our tail. And when that passes 70, we're going to take our next science. There we go. Mission completed. We are now in space near Kerbin.
Sweeping success. More science. Excellent. So, while we wait for our ship to, to do its long, lovely peek over this tiny blue marble that is our home, um, let's, let's actually uh, look at our crew reports. Oh, can we not review our crew reports yet? So later on, we'll be able to, to review our crew reports. So now that we're out of the atmosphere, you can see we can actually time warp a lot faster. And it'll automatically slow us down when we reach the atmosphere. So, we have left the atmosphere. Hooray! We've hit several more world first milestones. And now, yep, there we go. Automatically sets time warp to one. We're going to orient ourselves against so that our heat shield is facing into the atmosphere. So you can see we're currently accelerating at a terrifying 1400 meters per second. We have our parachutes in two stages and the, the um, stages conveniently highlight when it's safe or unsafe to deploy the chutes. So if the, bu if the button is red and you hit it, your chutes are, are toast. If the button is, is orange, it's probably toast. So we're going to wait when we're below, when we're down to 300 meters per second and below 4 kilometers, 3 kilometers. So now we are a shiny rocket and our ablator is at least at the leading edge, which is nice, we like that. We're getting a little bit of heat. Oh, oh yep, no longer at the ablator. <laughs> We're a little bit heavy. There we go, slowing down nicely. We want to be below 300 meters per second. And then we'll hit our primary chute. Ooh, we're coming in very fast. Oh, we're coming in too fast. still coming in so very fast. I feel like we should be decelerating a lot sooner. They may have made some tweaks that make it so we actually need drogue shoots now. So we know we definitely have enough to, to launch us out of the atmosphere and then some. So let's take out a couple of tanks. So if we take out three tanks, what will that give us? So that, that only drops us down uh, 400 uh, meters per second at delta V. Um, and we're going to add drogue shoots. But max safe deploy speed is 400 meters per second, which is definitely faster than this. So apparently these parachutes are more specific now than they used to be. Now I have to be below 260, so that's good to know. And we definitely need drogue shoots to slow us down. So we're going to put on three drogue shoots. We will deploy those earlier. Where are our drogue shoots? There they are. So those can deploy higher up. And they will deploy at the maximum safe speed. So we need to be, say, 400 meters per second to deploy those. Okay, let's see how this works. <laughs> Breacher 3, we are learning through explosions, just as rocket science was intended. Everything's okay, part's ready. Let's do this, let's do this right. All right, so we're ready to launch. We have our peak threat to thrust to weight ratio at 1.7. So we'll put the max throttle, we'll dial back a little bit. We have SAS on. All systems are green. Let's say 3, 2, 1, rock, make rocket go down. Dial back. We're going to keep our thrust to weight ratio around 1.5. It's a value I like. It's a value I found helpful to keep um, when you're at particularly low at low atmo, when the, the air is nice and thick, so uh, we'll keep that there for our first 5 kilometers or so. 
maybe a little overkill, you could probably go higher without being a big deal. But I like to, to go slow at first. And we'll let that start creeping up. So the, the rocket engine itself is at peak efficiency when it's at full throttle, but our overall rocket in, in efficiency in terms of um, atmospheric resistance, if we push it too hard too fast, it, it's super inefficient because we're putting a lot of energy into just pushing our way through the air. So we're at 10 kilometers now, we're gonna start a gravity turn. Do it nice and gentle. Just gonna keep nudging that over because again, uh, the, the more our uh, orientation is off from our trajectory, the more face we have towards the, um, towards the oncoming atmosphere. And while the atmosphere is pretty thin up here, it is, it is still there and it is still pushing back. So we're above 20,000 now. We're going we're gonna to push it a little bit harder. Try and get that angle. What we want is our apoapsis above 70. With a little bit of fuel we have left, so we have another 17 seconds of thrust. So we're going to dial that all the way up. There we go, we did it. We will definitely peak over. And you can see when we switch to our orbital trajectory that, that pops over because now it's no longer accounting for the it's no longer accounting for the, the speed of the surface. So before the speed of the surface was the so because the planet is rotating and while that planet is rotating our speed relative to the surface um, is different from our speed once we're actually in orbit now that we're in orbit this is relative to the to the planet core as a fixed thing instead of relative to the speed of the surface so now we're going to have a nice float uh, and when we pass that 70 mark we are going to do more science because it's exciting because we're going to leave the atmosphere Everybody loves leaving the atmosphere, except that it's terrifying because there's no air up there. Do you know? There's no air up there. It's very scary. For a long time, we actually believed that space was empty, um, that there was no air, no anything. That was what space was, the vacuum of space. Um, and what we came to figure out later on is that it's actually just super, super spread out. So we're going to reorient. We're going to put our, our butt facing down. So we're still on our way up. We have not peaked yet. So we're going to time warp just a little bit until we get back. Ooh. And then we're going to reorient so that our butt is facing downward. Um, later on, you can see this little green button, and this is just stability assist. So basically, this is giving our pilot um, directions on what she should be doing um, while SAS is engaged, or RCS, depending on what system you're using. And the... I mean, SAS actually stands for Stability Assist System. And so the default mode is just Stability Assist. Uh, later on, as our pilot and our buildings level up, we can actually give her more specific directions. Um, so the, the two green markers, there's the other one, which is prograde, and there's this one, which is retrograde. What that means is we're pointing in the opposite direction that we're moving. Um, and that's what's keeping our butt oriented towards uh, the oncoming atmosphere, putting our ablator right in the path and giving it a, uh, hopefully a bit of wind resistance to start it slowing down. Uh, remember we want to get below 424 meters per second before we hit those drogue chutes. We're going to try and keep this on that dot as long as possible as we might have make a nice fireball into the atmosphere. And at some point the air is going to get too thick and my clumsy controls ah, are going to force us around so that we can orient to a more aerodynamic uh, position. So now when this gets below 424, this should turn green, and we'll hit those chutes to slow us down. There we go. And now when we get down below 240, we can hit the bigger chutes. Those will really slow us. And those should deploy at around one kilometer, and we'll just drift back down to the ground nicely and gently. Most of the, the default parts are, are very susceptible, so anything above 6 meters per second and they explode. Um, but they do explode sequentially, the whole rocket won't just go up unless you're going really fast. At 4 meters per second, that is a speed we like to see. That's, that's how we want to land, splash down nice and gently in the water. 
safely returned from space with our, our flower of shoots. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Red, orange, yellow. That's, that's just, that's very satisfying to my sense of, of organization. Valentina, as pleased as can be, still in our windowless cockpit. We have a safe splashdown. Excellent. Let's recover the vessel and see how much science we get. Look at that, 133 science earned. Well done. I say that was a very successful mission. Uh, we recovered uh, 6K, uh, almost 6K in funds from parts. Um, and from our missions, we earned a bunch more cash. So in our next episode, we'll start looking at upgrading buildings, but that is where we'll cut it for now. Uh, thanks for watching. Tune in for the next episode. I hope you enjoyed it.